Welcome back to Click Capital, everybody, your go-to channel for the latest fundamental and technical analysis of all the markets. And the bulls are having their day in the sun again, parting like it's 1999 with the Nasdaq and S&P 500 breaking out to new highs for the year. And that's apparently on news that Kevin McCarthy says the House could vote on the debt ceiling next week. And he can see a path telling senators to cut their break short for the debt limit vote. So apparently it's a good thing with the US government getting close to default and then saying they're not going to. Also adding to the optimism today is the AI hype still ongoing as Nvidia breaks out today above 315 a share as they just announced their new gaming cards the RTX 4060 coming out soon and a bunch of other new ones as well getting people excited about the AI train again. And not wanting to miss out on all the AI hype is Meta which pulled the curtain back today on its own AI chips for the first time and these chips will eventually power more than advanced metaverse related tasks such as virtual reality, augmented reality, and the burgeoning field of generative AI, which generally refers to AI software that can create compelling text, images, and videos. And we can see that excitement on the charts here. Here's Nvidia up almost 5% today on almost double average volume of 74 million shares. Same with Meta breaking out to new year-to-date highs, along with all the other mega cap stocks as well. Here's Apple breaking out, Microsoft breaking out, Amazon, Google new year-to-date heights as well, AMD, and Netflix also ripping 9% higher too on the back of their announcement that they've got 5 million new subscribers for their ad supported tier. So that move appears to be working for them. And all those big stocks ripping to new highs for the year pushed the Nasdaq up above this resistance zone we've been watching on big volume as well. And the S&P 500 actually climbed a little bit above 4200 today for the first time this year. But once again, it's mega cap tech dominating the indices and pulling them higher as a lot of stocks didn't join in on the party today especially the defensive stocks in consumer healthcare and utilities and we also saw some softness in the REITs and industrial space as well another positive sign for the market was the weekly initial jobless claims coming in less than expected at 242,000 versus the 254,000 so the jobs market is still holding up for the time being and with risk markets breaking out and the jobs market holding up it's no surprise that the Fed fund futures market has increased their probabilities that the Fed will will hike in June to 35% and I wouldn't be surprised to see that number get closer to 50% soon and this just goes to show that the market is still not sure if the Fed is done or not and I don't think the Fed knows either as we're only not too long ago within two weeks ago we're at a one or two percent probability they're going to hike the market was pretty much saying that the Fed is definitely done now it's not so sure and that's because we've got another Fed president from Dallas Laurie Logan coming out today and saying the data points so far don't justify skipping a rate hike in June. She did say the data in coming weeks could yet show that it is appropriate to skip a meeting. However, as of today though, we aren't there yet. So the talk out of most Fed presidents continues to leave the door open for another hike next month. And no surprise with that optimism in the air, the fear and greed index is well back into the greed zone here at 66 today. And the options market getting really excited as well. 57% of volume today was in calls with some super low put volumes in NVIDIA at 39%. Tesla at 38%, Netflix 37%, Amazon 36 Microsoft 39 Meta 34 Apple 34 So what that's saying is most of the volume in these names is in call options. So people are loading into the call options here today on these big names. And dark pool buyers had it right once again, and they increased their buying even more today, up to 52% on the dick. So they're not holding up at all on this rally. So this rally could still have some more legs to it. However, contrasting the dark pool buyers are corporate insiders, which really stepped up their sales yesterday, actually outnumbering purchases 231 to 134. So company insiders are taking advantage of these elevated prices and offloading a bit of their stock up here. And even though there's a lot of optimism out there for the US government not going to default on its debt and the AI buzz and the hype and excitement around all of that new technology. The US and the world still has a huge amount of global debt as it nears record highs and the world still struggling to adjust to 4 5% rates. And with global debt at close to 305 trillion, it's 45 trillion higher than its pre-pandemic levels. And the cost of service that debt is growing as well. 
especially for the US government. Their net interest cost per year is quickly becoming one of the largest items in the budget and soon going to be eclipsing other large areas such as defense. And some estimates show the US government or you as the taxpayer will have to spend $5.4 trillion over the next 10 years to continue servicing that huge debt. And some of the brightest minds in the financial space are sounding the alarm on this with Ray Dalio saying the debt ceiling debate sets stage for a disastrous financial collapse. He goes on to say mounting US debt will eventually lead to the equivalent of a run on the central bank and said increasing the debt limit the way Congress and presidents have repeatedly done and most likely will do this time around will mean there will be no meaningful limit on the debt. This will eventually lead to a disastrous financial collapse. And that's because there's a lack of effective restraint on spending, which he thinks could spell big trouble ahead. And it's hard not to agree with that. If you think about it from a personal stance, if you go on a binge, you know, you spend way more than what you're making constantly year after year and your debt just becomes multiples of your income. The burden and weight of that debt just is too heavy on your shoulders and you eventually have to pay for it one way or another. Also out news today was Walmart earnings that came out a bit better than expected. They beat expectation and raised their outlook for the fiscal year, which is contrasting to other retailers. Their same store sales climbed 7.4% ahead of analyst and estimates of 5.5%. And part of Carl Icahn's problems over the last few years has been his investment losses and he actually came out today and admits he was wrong to take a huge short position on the market that lost nine billion dollars and he is actually quoted as saying i've always told people there is nobody who can really pick the market on a short term or intermediate term basis maybe i made the mistake of not adhering to my own advice in recent years and that's true in all my back testing over the years i've always found hedging to cost and it makes sense because hedging is like buying insurance you can't expect to be profitable on the long run on buying insurance and it's just funny to see some of the longest players in the space continue to lose billions by doing that exact same thing and we continue to see big hedge fund managers pile into the ai space and tell everyone about it billionaire steve cohen tells investors to ride the big wave of artificial intelligence and stop focusing on recession odds and not wanting to miss out either is bill ackman who recently put 1.1 billion into google this was in addition to stanley Druckenmiller, which we reported the other day pumped in almost half a billion into microsoft and nvidia so it's interesting to see these big time investors not really care about the valuations, but instead just want to pile in onto this big AI momentum trade. So they obviously think that this momentum has much further to go. And it's this trend and theme of AI that's really pulling the market high this year, especially the NASDAQ and mega cap stocks as well. But what will be really interesting to see is that we do get a recession later this year. What will happen to these really overvalued, overhyped AI? AI stocks. And when they do eventually crash, I'm sure investors like Kathy Wood will once again blame it on the Fed and not herself. Back over to the charts, we've got a bit of dispersion going on out there in the international stock indices. We've still got Canada's TSX underneath a 50. Same with the FTSE. German DAX just found new highs today. The Nikkei is still on a tear and the Aussie and the China still struggling under their 50s. Over to volatility land, we're really flat up the front here with one day, nine day, and 30 day. All sitting really low here with the fix at 16. And even the back end, three month and six month is coming down to their lows as well. So volatility has just been sucked out of this market as we grind higher. Volatility of volatility isn't at its lows though, as, as the movement in volatility pricing itself is still a little bit elevated. And we're seeing a little bit of a tick up in actual movement, realized volatility at 14% annualized. And with implied volatility coming down, and realize going up we're seeing that that volatility risk premium come back down towards neutral again so the volatility market is really saying there's nothing to worry here it's all good the buzz surrounding ai overwhelms everything else but bonds are still a lot more volatile relative to stocks we've still got the move vix spread at near all-time highs and there's all that call buying in the put call ratio at a really low 0.85 but if you want to buy out of the money options for some tail risk insurance you'll still have to pay up with this skew at 138 and funnily enough, even though we're breaking out and a lot of call buying, there's still less than half of stocks above their 20-day average. Same with the long-term average as well. Just below half of stocks above the 200-day. 
And 66 stocks from the NYSE made new highs today and 77 on the NASDAQ. So we're seeing a bit of breadth improving in the amount of stocks making new highs, but still nothing like the previous bull market. And staying on the weekly time frame for you here is the growth first offensive sectors. That's breaking out. High beta stocks versus low volatility having a bit of a pop. And growth stocks versus value stocks extending past this resistance zone we've been watching. And so the huge tear in growth versus value this year continues. Same with the NASDAQ versus the S&P 500 continues to rip and the nasdaq versus a small cap russell actually close to breaking out to all-time highs near the high we saw in the middle of covid lockdowns back in mid 2020 and there's small caps versus the s p 500 still sitting down near their covid lows as well growth commodity copper versus defensive commodity gold still trading really weak though in a contrast to risk on markets keeping on the weekly chart here is the commodities versus stocks still in this large correction that we've been in for almost a year now Gold as well, struggling to break out versus stocks here. Although gold has been doing a lot better versus treasuries. And international stocks versus American stocks turning back down as well as they had a pretty good run this year. And there's the most watched yield curve. The US government 10-year yield minus the US government 2-year yield. Still in inverted territory at minus 60 basis points. High yield bonds versus treasuries still in a downtrend. But surprisingly, they're holding up well against investment grade debt. And inflation expectation as measured by inflation protected treasuries versus versus regular treasuries continues to hold up. So the market is not expecting inflation to dive anytime soon. And back over onto the daily chart, we've got the US two-year yield breaking out today above 420. Same with the 10-year coming up to the resistance zone at 360 and looking to break through that. And here's the June Fed Fund futures contract just sneaking a little bit high, increasing its probability they're going to hike next month. But we're getting much more movement in the back end in December, which is actually just breaking out today to new multi-week highs. And so the bond market looks to be catching up to what the Fed is saying that they're not going to be cutting this year. If anything, they'll be going on pause for the rest of the year. And with those higher rates, we saw the TLT lose a bit of support here today. But I still expect this thing to continue trading range brown and coming down to our buy sell band. It's getting a bit oversold here. So I'd expect it to find support around 101 or maybe 100 if we really get oversold as it should still make a good flight to safety hedge in the event that we do get a recession later this year or anything else bad happens in the market. And diverging from the optimism and other risk assets Assets is high yield corporate bonds pretty much flat here today and still underneath their 50. So even though investors are piling into the riskiest of equities, they're not doing the same in bonds. And on the great news that the US government is not going to default on their debt, that optimism is adding to a stronger dollar. We've got the dollar index at 103.50 here today. And that's adding pressure onto hard assets like Bitcoin coming off almost 2% and commodities overall still trading a little weak here. Gold as well, still trying to find its footing around mid 1900s an ounce and the other precious metal silver which is more widely used in many industrial applications is coming off a little bit more than gold as well and even though we've got a much stronger dollar crude is holding up with that and pretty good move and natty gas here today up over 10 percent on volume to above 260 but again in another divergence there's economic sensitive copper still trading really weak too and food commodities pull back underneath their 50 looking at stock sectors so we really saw some big moves up in the sensitive stuff like i IPOs, which appear to be coming back to life. We're picking up on IPOs year over year, approaching new highs for the year. Although we didn't see huge moves up in the overvalued stocks. And we can see that with ARK up only 1.4%, which volatility adjusted for this thing is not too much. The big move was in mega cap tech. And we can see that in the tech sector fund up here, breaking out pretty good. And especially semis that move up in NVIDIA and AMD really took the semi sector higher here today. And at the forefront of it all is the robotics and artificial intelligence ETF bots breaking out today on huge volume financials just had a bit of a pause here today with regionals sitting right at the 50 same with industrials trading really thick transports as well so old economy stocks just kind of tracking sideways and with those higher rates making bonds more appealing yielding sectors like REITs healthcare consumer staples and utilities continue to trade weak but we did see a little bit of a dip buy on utilities here forming a hammer candle formation had a good move up here on blackrock today tesla now back above its 50 after this strong divergence and i think this will go sideways now i had been bearish on it after this earnings but with mega cap tech breaking out that's just kind of holding tesla up of course it's still well away from its year-to-date highs and this thing looks to be just trading a bit thick and sideways we've already gone over mega cap tech here's another look at Apple clearly in a parabolic uptrend here and along with its peers continues to defy the rest of the market and surprisingly meme stocks were pretty weak on today's move not much going on there. 
Take Two Interactive reported earnings today, and even though they missed street expectations, the market loved their guidance and the announcement that they might be releasing their latest version of Grand Theft Auto soon, which sent the stock up almost 12%. And there's a look at Walmart after they released their better than expected earnings with better guidance as well. We whipped up to new highs, but then quickly sold off. Interesting was Target, which performed pretty well yesterday after earnings, but reversed course today and found new lows down 4.2%. Capital One continues to trade high after we got news Warren Buffett sunk a billion into it. And it looks like the market has found fair value on ICANN, just volatility really been sucked out of this trading underneath 35 a share. And finally, Charles Schwab just put in its second day above its 50. So the banking space looks to really have found some footing here of late. Okay, back over to SP500, just under 4,200. And even though we've got a huge 400 point gap between that and the global net liquidity model, we have to pay attention to price action first and foremost, as we've got all indices now, even the equal weight ones back above their 50, including the Dow and mid caps, smalls and even micro caps as well. Still a lot of divergences out there in the market with junk bonds and breadth still not reaching new highs. However, no matter how irrational it may seem, we don't want to fight the market here. So I had been slightly net short. I've moved the book back down to completely market neutral and will likely stay near neutral for some time and assess it day by day as usual. And that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in again and hope to see you again tomorrow for the last trading day of the week. Take care.